Ladies and gentlemen, I went back and forth on whether I should move on this video right now. If you're watching it on release day, Season of the Chosen is only hours away. On top of all the typical content that comes along with the season, we're also seeing adjustments to many weapons recoils. Suros included. Things should get marginally better for controller players, and possibly a little worse on mouse and keyboard. Suros Regime is a weapon that I really wanted to take a look at with the post Beyond Light sandbox changes. But with the batch of new weapons that we got with Beyond Light, I was never really able to circle back around to it. And with the new season so close, I feel like revisiting Suros is kind of a now or never situation. Or at least a now or not for a long time situation. So I'm gonna go with now. Pre Beyond Light, in the Crucible at least, Suros was a top 10 weapon. But since the adjustment to adaptive auto rifles damage values, it's now sitting at 32 in quick play usage. So what I want to do is explore how much these auto rifle changes affected Suros itself because it does perform a little bit differently than other 600 autos. So we can compare the pre and post nerf damage values and see how it's holding up in the current sandbox. At the same time, I think it would be only fair to touch on the PvE aspects of Suros Regime. And while I don't have a whole lot to say about the weapon in this regard, we'll at least put it through its paces. But if at any point during the course of this video you find it useful, helpful, or enjoyable, please take the time to leave it a like, and consider subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming channel to catch a lot more Destiny 2 content presented by yours truly. But let's get into the review with a look at Suros Regime's stats and perks. Alright, Suros Regime is an exotic kinetic auto rifle firing at 600 rounds per minute with 36 rounds in the magazine. We do have two selectable fire modes though, spinning up which increases the weapon's fire rate as you hold down the trigger, and dual speed receiver which will drop the fire rate down to 360 rounds per minute to match that of high impact frame auto rifles but it will also match the damage profile. For the stats, we're going to slide in some solid numbers from Destiny Tracker. And when comparing these to other 600 RPM auto rifles, we are looking really strong across the board as far as the base stats go. The aim assist and recoil direction are on the average side, but they're not a hindrance by any means. Suros Regime's intrinsic trait is Suros Legacy. The bottom half of each magazine deals bonus damage and has the chance to return health on a kill. Now I am going to be running through the damage values associated with the intrinsic trait in this video, but I'm not going to redo my previous health regen testing. It should hold up just fine. Without the catalyst, you're going to have a 50-50 shot at regening your health on a kill. With the catalyst, you're looking at roughly a 75% chance. But if you don't have Suros yet and you'd like to get your hands on it, it is a random world drop, or can be purchased from Xur. For the catalyst, to the best of my knowledge, it still should be dropping as a post-match reward in the Crucible. But with that out of the way, let's head into PvE and look at Suros Regime's damage output and touch on its performance. First things first, let's take a look at the two different fire modes. Dual Speed Receiver is going to turn Suros into a slower firing, harder hitting auto rifle. Rounds per minute comes in at 360, and per bullet damage is going to be higher than that of the spinning up fire mode. When spinning up is selected, you will see a fire rate increase as you hold down the trigger. It appears that the first 12 bolts are fired at 600 rounds per minute, the next 12 will be fired at 720, and the final 12 rounds will be fired at 900 rounds per minute. You'll have to give me a bullet or two of leeway there because it is pretty difficult to tell exactly when the fire rate switches over. For the damage with dual speed receiver though, a crit is going to land on Carl for 1207 points of damage. This is exactly the same as a kinetic high impact auto rifle like False Promises. But due to the Suros Legacy intrinsic trait, the 18th round in the magazine is going to register for 1268, and it can ramp up to 1327 points of damage on the final round in the magazine. So that's going from a 5 to a 10% damage increase when the magazine goes from half full to completely empty. So I totaled up all the damage values for each round fired, and we're looking at 44,378 points of damage in a single magazine if every round lands as a crit. And this damage is delivered in just about 6 seconds. With false promises, with a 36 round magazine, we could deliver 43,452 points of damage in the same time frame. So the increased damage from Suros over a legendary 360 RPM auto is minimal. When we throw on spinning up though, a base crit is going to hit for 738 points of damage. And if we look at an adaptive auto rifle like the forward path, it's registering 782 points of damage on a crit. So Suros is slightly lower. With the Suros Legacy intrinsic trait though, on the 18th round we're going to hit for 775 points of damage, and things will max out on the final round with 812 points of damage. So again, adding up all the damage values for this fire mode, I found that if every round lands as a crit, we can deal 27,410 points of damage in a single magazine. 
and we're going to take 2.95 seconds to fire off the entire magazine. The forward path, which takes 3.6 seconds to expend 36 rounds, deals 28,152 points of damage if each round lands as a crit. So we're looking at less total damage per magazine from Suros, but it can deliver this damage a bit faster. So in terms of PvE performance, I think the biggest upside you're going to run into with Suros is the survivability aspect. Now as I mentioned earlier in my previous review, I found that you have a 75% chance of recovering health on a kill once you have that catalyst unlocked, and a 50% chance without it. And assuming that you're probably going to be using Suros predominantly to clear adds, you're going to be getting your health back quite often. And plus, since Suros does have a catalyst, we will be generating orbs of power on multi-kills. And you know if you're a titan, you can always throw an Actium War Rig and let that bottom half of the magazine chew for a little bit longer. That will help out the damage. Unfortunately, I think that's about all the credit that I can give Suros in PvE. Now don't get me wrong, the general feel of the gun is great. It definitely shoots bullets, and it definitely kills the baddies. When looking sheerly at the damage profile though, it's really tough to justify burning your exotic slot on this one. We're only looking at a marginal damage increase over a legendary high impact auto rifle when using dual speed receiver mode. And while the damage per second might be slightly higher when using the spinning up fire mode versus a legendary adaptive auto rifle, Suros does deal less damage on a magazine to magazine basis. So I really can't call it a reliable source of single target damage. And if you're simply using this exotic to clear adds, there are a lot of primary exotics out there that do a better job. I mean, Sunshot, Graviton Lance, Trinity Ghoul, even Cerberus can excel in this department. So outside of some improved survivability, this weapon just isn't providing a whole lot of utility to the user. And being an exotic, and having so many other good exotic options out there, I just have a really hard time seeing Suros as a great PvE option. But I don't think it was ever really meant to be. Me personally, I've always viewed this weapon as one that was designed with PvP in mind. So let's head into the Crucible and see how it's holding up in there. Alright, as always, we're going to start out with a look at our damage numbers. And I'm going to have the pre-Beyond Light damage values worked in here also, so we can see how much impact that Adaptive Auto Rifle nerf had on Suros. We'll tackle Dual Speed Receiver first. At base, we're hitting for 36 points of damage on a crit, and 22 points of damage to the body. The optimal time to kill is going to come in at 0.83 seconds by landing 5 crits in one body shot, and the body shot time to kill comes in at 1.33 seconds with 9 shots landed. So we saw absolutely no change to the damage values with the Dual Speed Receiver Fire Mode. But, the Suros Legacy damage increase used to help this thing out. Pre-Beyond Light with the final 5 rounds, you used to be able to secure a 5 crit kill with the last 5 rounds in the magazine. This does not appear to be the case anymore. With the bottom half of the magazine, you're still going to need 5 crits and 1 body shot. Also, pre-Beyond Light, anywhere in the bottom half of the magazine, you could secure an 8 shot body shot kill. Now, no matter how deep we are in the mag, it is still taking 9 shots. Now, I don't know why this is. They may have stealth nerfed it and dropped the damage values marginally without telling anybody, but either way, this is a little disappointing. But in the dual speed receiver fire mode, your optimal range is going to be 26 meters. Past that, you're going to start seeing damage fall off. Alright, moving on to the spinning up fire mode, and this is where things get a little more complicated, but we're going to take it piece by piece. But do keep in mind, at base, Suros does not hit as hard as a standard legendary adaptive AR. So with Suros, we're looking at 22 points of damage on a crit, and 15 points of damage to the body. This is going to put the optimal time to kill at 0.8 seconds, with 9 crits. All other 600 RPM auto rifles are going to achieve the same time to kill, with 8 crits in one body. The body shot time to kill is coming in at 1.3 seconds with 14 shots landed. This puts it on a level footing with other adaptive auto rifles. As soon as we get into the bottom half of the magazine though, we can start going 8 crit in one body to hit our optimal time to kill. But at no point can we see an 8 bullet kill no matter how deep in the mag we go. For the body shot time to kill, as soon as the Suros Legacy buff kicks in, we can deal lethal damage with 13 shots in 1.2 seconds. Here again, this is going to hold true no matter how deep we are into the magazine. Who says warlocks are and now that we have that established, we can look at the increasing fire rate with the damage increase. If you're spun up to the stage 2 fire rate, that being 720 rounds per minute, and you pull onto a target's head, you will be able to down them in 0.67 seconds. In the same manner, if you pull onto a target's body, they're going to be downed in 1 second flat. In the stage 3 fire rate, 900 rounds per minute, when landing crits, you'll be able to down a target in 0.53 seconds. 
And when landing shots to the body, you can deal lethal damage in 0.8 seconds. And one more thing to note, oddly enough, when the spinning up fire mode is selected, you're going to get one extra meter of physical range, now dealing full damage from 27 meters in. This seems kind of backwards when compared to dual speed receiver, but it is what it is. So, Suros absolutely was affected by the adaptive auto rifle nerf, but it wasn't hit quite as hard as other weapons in the archetype. All other 600 RPM auto rifles saw their base optimal time to kills go from 0.7 to 0.8 seconds. Suros at base in the previous sandbox was already sitting at 0.8. Now it just has a less forgiving bullet combination. And while it did see some dips when spun up and under the effect of the Suros Legacy buff, we're talking about hundredths of a second. So performance-wise, Suros is still doing what Suros has always done, and that is giving the wielder the ability to score extremely fast time to kills from mid-range in. A 0.8 second optimal time to kill as it sits currently is still pretty competitive, but due to that increasing fire rate, Suros does a really nice job at dealing with multiple targets in the area. If you can down a primary target and then shift your focus to a secondary target as the weapon continues to spin up, you're about to hit a very quick time to kill. Or if you know you're entering into a 1v1 situation, you can always pre-fire your gun and get that thing humming just before you move to engage. And you also do have that chance of getting healed on a kill. Remember though, it's only a chance. It's not something that I can really say is wise to rely on, but it can be a lifesaver in certain scenarios. Suros does have strong stats across the board also. They really help make this gun feel smooth, agile, and responsive. Plus, if you do have that catalyst unlocked, you will be generating orbs of power on multi-kills, and Suros does have some pretty high multi-kill potential. And if you're taking advantage of high energy fire, you're going to be getting a 20% damage buff on an orb pickup. And I just wanted to try this out at its full potential here. At the max fire rate with a 20% damage buff, you can down a target in 0.4 seconds with 7 crits. It's pretty impressive. Also, auto rifles in general are a more forgiving weapon class to use. Even if you miss a shot or two, it's not going to tank your time to kill, like it would if you were using a slower firing precision based weapon. For some cons though, whatever happened to dual speed receiver with Beyond Light is a shame, and it really detracted from its usefulness. Having the ability to reduce your time to kill when the Suros Legacy damage buff kicked in was why I would use that fire rate. Without it, you're really not benefiting any more from this weapon than you would from a legendary high impact auto rifle. Unless of course you simply like the feel of Suros in that fire mode, then by all means, continue to use it. And then the physical range on this weapon isn't feeling as competitive anymore. Pre-Beyond Light, Suros used to be on level footing with hand cannons as far as range goes. Since hand cannons did receive a range increase in Beyond Light, they are going to stretch a little bit further than Suros can. And with some of the time to kills that hand cannons can achieve when under a damage buff, you really need to make sure you aren't engaging from too far out. Lastly, auto rifles do require you to maintain line of sight on a target, and this often means stepping out of cover for a prolonged period of time. You really need to be aware of your surroundings and mind your positioning because nothing feels worse than catching one in the dome from across the map when you've just stepped away from winning a gunfight. For the verdict, while I don't consider Suros to be a great PvE option, in PvP, it's doing just fine. While the meta has shifted its focus away from auto rifles, and hand cannons once again have risen to the top of the pack, if you're someone who likes using auto rifles, Suros is still a fantastic option. There is a lot of upside to using Suros still, even though it's slipped down a little bit in the usage charts. Me being a player whose skill level probably falls more toward the middle of the player base, I was still able to find a good deal of success with Suros and put together some really nice rounds in PvP. All in all, I think it's still a very good option, and it's definitely worth taking a look at if you haven't given it a spin recently. But if you did enjoy this video, please remember to leave it a like, and consider subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming channel to catch more Destiny 2 content in the very near future. If you'd like to catch me live, I will occasionally be streaming right here on YouTube. And to contact me, you can look for Ironworker814 on Twitter, join our community Discord, link will be in the description, or drop a comment down below and I will do my best to get back to you. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out this weapon review. You guys are awesome, and I will catch you on the next one.